All right, Coach. Come, wrapping up the first half, tough tough matchup against B, number seven ranked BU this Sunday. Chance for both teams to take the season series. Just what are your thoughts heading into this last game before the break, and how you think the team's done so far? Yeah, well, was certainly where um, you know I, I think I was. I don't know if it was on the call last week or whenever I was asked about the beginning of the season and, or, you know, the first half of the season and what that means for you. And, you know, tomorrow night I'm going up to uh, Boston college because they're honoring Jerry York and I'm excited to go be there for him. I think it's like, he's such a special guy and important in, in my life and career. And he used to always say, you know, the first half of the season, you can't win any trophies, but you can play yourself out of a few if, if you don't play well. And I think we've played well enough where we're in position to win some trophies in the second half. But he used to always say, and Michael, just remember, though, once January 1st hit, that's when the men's league begins, you know. And it, it does seem like the games become more intense uh, in the second half of the season. That being said, uh, we have a chance to play against BU and finish the season on a, a strong note against what I think is maybe the most balanced team in our league as far as when you look at goaltending, uh, defense, and two high-end mobile defensemen and some big, strong, tough defensemen, and then experience up and down their forward lineup with, with experienced seniors and really talented freshmen, uh, excellent special teams. They really don't have any weaknesses. So it's a game where we're going to have to be, uh, you know, extremely locked in uh, for 60 minutes uh, if we want the, you know, the right result. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Who wants to start us off? Go ahead, Joe. Cam, yeah, how is BU different than when you saw them earlier in the season? Um, I, I don't know, Joe. They, they've been pretty consistent, I think, you know, all, all season long. Um, you know, I, I think they're getting a lot of complimentary scoring. It, you know, it's not just – uh, they're top guys that score. They, they can score in a lot of different ways, and a lot of different lines can hurt you. So it's not like you can just focus on one line to try to shut them mm -hmm. down. Uh, I think they've been pretty consistent, you know, all, all season long. So to answer your question, I, I don't know if they, they've played much different. You know, I'll, I'll be able to see the game against Boston College and, and see how they play there, but they, they've been pretty consistent all, all season long. Randy, we'll go over to you. Thanks. Um, Coach, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first chance to face a team for the third time this year. What's uh, Can you talk a little bit about the importance of winning a, a Hockey East series? Yeah. I mean, we always put importance on, on the series. And, um, you know, this year, if, if if we're successful and we can win that game Sunday, we'd win that season series versus them. When, and that'd be really important for a number of reasons. One, it helps us in our standings. Two, you know, you have a tiebreaker against them if, you, if you're if you tied with points at the end of the year. So it's uh, it's really important to us uh, that, that we do that because we've been, you know, so far this season, we haven't lost a season series. And in and, and this one, we're trailing – they have four points. We have two. But, you know, a three-point game would put us over them, and it's a very important three points for us. Um, and specifically for – you know, we've seen Scoog run that play from uh, behind the net. Is that something that kind of gets on teams' radars because he's executed it a few <laughs> times? Is there, uh, you know, some – I know it's kind of a, a trick play and everything, but is it something that – you kind of uh, catches your eye and something to, to to look for when you play them. You know, it's not something we're going to practice. You know, like uh, practice mm -hmm. against this week was certainly 
aware of it and cognizant that he, he's very good at that play. But if we're giving him that much room behind the net, I'm more worried about that. You know, we, we should be playing a lot tighter defense than that. Uh, so, you know, definitely our goaltenders will be aware of it. Uh, but it's not something that we're going to go out to practice today and say, hey, let's practice against this. Right. Um, and then finally, just what was it been a, about a nine day layoff, just in general, how, uh, you know, the vibe of practice has been, how kind of, uh, you know, a nine day layoff kind of plays out in your preparation and also maybe a little bit of hunger to get back out there. Yeah, it's funny, you know, like there's two schools of thought sometimes, you know, when, you know, we lost to Cornell, we were happy to get right back at it on Tuesday, but it also wears you down when you're playing three games and six days or seven days or whatever it was. Uh, so it wasn't bad to have a little bit of a break and have a breather last weekend and not have any practices, but we've got back to it this week and there's been some good energy in practice. Great. Looking forward to Sunday. See you. See you in Hartford. Sounds good. JD, we'll head over to you. Hi, thank you. Uh, this is John Doyle from USCHO. Uh, Coach, can you uh, comment on the nature of this league coming up to the halfway point? There are six ranked teams, and you guys are fortunate enough to be on top, but what is it, like four points separates the top five or something like that? How how tough is it to win in this league? And uh, I was going into each game knowing that, uh, you know, the whole any given Sunday, uh, you know, definitely exists in hockey. East. Yeah, it's uh, John, it's been a, you know, this will be our 19th game uh, of the first half here. And of those 19 games, 12 have been against top 20 opponents. So it's been a, it's been a grind. And, and you know, if you look at last year, it shouldn't surprise anybody because I think Northeastern won the league with 47 points. I think UMass had 46. Uh, I actually think Lowell might have had 46. And then Merrimack, ourselves, and BU had 41. So you're talking about five teams separated by six points, which is essentially two games. You know, it, it just seems like every year, that seems to be the case in Hockey East. It's a it's a very, very competitive league, night in and night out. Thank you. Dan, we'll head over to you. Kind of in that same vein, in the last seven games, you've only had two wins. Is that just the nature of the teams that you've been playing? And obviously it's tough to win those Hockey East games. Or do you think there's something with the way you guys have been playing that um, needs to be improved. Yeah, I think you're going to go through ebbs and flows through an entire season, you know, in, in those seven games. Um, what are we, two, three, and two? Is that what we are? Yeah, and one of those losses is an overtime loss, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's when you're playing a very competitive schedule, uh, you're going to go through stretches like that. Uh, throughout a season uh, the key is to be able to you know weather those storms and be able to play consistent hockey Dan and uh you know I, I think the for me the Cornell game was an anomaly uh and the other games like even the Merrimack game was competitive the other night I think we lost our composure uh but it was still we we were competitive in the game it wasn't like it, it was a blowout, uh, the, that score. So our, our goal is to com to be compete uh, every single night and give ourselves a chance to win. And every now and then you're going to run through some stretches in a season where you may tie some games and it might not go your way, but you have to continue to compete because in the long run, it'll pay off for you. And then with the winter break coming up, is this a shorter time off than you guys normally have, or is this – is it's like a little more than two weeks, isn't it? I feel like it's usually longer. Well, sometimes if you finish, you know, I, I think um, I've tried to, in the past we have finished <clears throat> last weekend, you know, our Merrimack game would have been our last game. And then we would have been off for three weeks. That can be a little long. I find, I, I think this is probably the optimum uh, amount away from, we all need a little bit of a break. Uh, but two weeks, 
you're not going to lose a lot of conditioning and uh, forget how to play hockey, you know? Uh, so I, I actually think it's pr pretty good to have just a two week break. Randy, we'll head over to you. Just because I'd love to mention it on the air on Sunday. I just thought, um, even though, of course, he's not with you. Love to hear uh, your thoughts on what Tage did the other night. Five goals in a game and four in the first period. It was funny. I was out to dinner last night uh, with some people, and I was, yeah, you know, my phone kept blowing up. And I'm just like, it's in my pocket, but I didn't want to be rude and pull it out and look at it during dinner. And then I finally got up to go to the bathroom and checked. I had 16 or 17 text message. Are you watching this? Uh, Tage has a chance to break the record. I had no idea what the hell was going on. And eventually, sorry, it's, it's remarkable. I think it's uh, talk about consistency. He He is, this isn't, you know, he's been so consistent all season long and, we're watching right in front of our eyes. Tage turning into a bona fide superstar in the NHL. Uh, it's fun to watch. And with him doing that, uh, you know, in the recruiting process, is that a guy that maybe you can point to? And and I mean, obviously you can, but does it come into play? Does it get, get brought up in conversations? Sure. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't we? You know, um, he's a kid who came here and uh, you know, again, came under the radar a little bit and led the league and led the country in power play goals his freshman year and had a very good sophomore year and, you know, turned pro and uh, yeah, we're, we're proud of his time here and him being a Yukon Husky. And I know he cherishes uh, his relationships that he had here. And I know he's very friendly with those guys in his class and uh, we're, we're proud of him and really happy for him. Thanks. Daniel, we'll head over to you. With Tage, but also looking back at your time at uh, BC with all the NHLers that you coached there, you have a lot of guys at UConn that are maybe in the AHL or the ECHL and have played pro, but what did Tage do and what is kind of the defined, is there something that you can see in the guys that make it to the NHL and stick in the NHL that just kind of sets them apart even when they're in college? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the one thing, and it's not true with every guy that's played in the NHL, but one thing I think that Tage had and like a Brian Boyle and a Cam Atkinson, they have this confidence that uh, you don't have to tell them that they're good players. You know, and I really believe that. And I worked with, uh, you know, Greg Brown at BC. For, for a number of years, and he used to tell me, you know, in the American League, guys will say, oh, sorry for that pass. In the NHL, they never say sorry. You should have caught that pass, you know. So he goes, like, there's a difference mentality-wise. And, uh, you know, I, I think Tage has that confidence uh, that's not arrogant, but it's just a very – he's got a lot of confidence in himself and his game. And I think it – you know, you need that. If, if you want to be a superstar in that league. 